Hello everybody! Researchers using deep learning often spend a lot of time designing custom neural architectures by hand. Today, I will present our work on letting the computer do that for you. It is Autosnap. But first, why is this relevant for researchers in computer-assisted interventions, Sky? Let's start with taking a look at papers accepted at Mikai. Of Kai label papers, almost two-thirds use deep learning. This percentage is probably even more pronounced in MIG. The peculiarity of Kai is that problems are often more than just classification or segmentation, where we could use established methods directly. Instead, Kai has a variety of tasks to solve, so more optimal deep learning methods might exist. For example, in instrument pulse estimation, we are looking to track instruments with extreme accuracy. For trajectory planning, we have medical images and seek achievable paths. And in video analysis, we are interested in performance or activity analysis. But how are deep learning methods typically engineered? Conceptually, we can simplify deep learning method development into four steps. In task design, a general strategy is devised on how to integrate this neural network. This might be an end-to-end -end or modular design, where knowledge about the tasks included in the design. Sometimes multiple networks are trained individually, but evaluated in a pipeline. The second step that heavily relies on domain expertise is the creation of a dataset and development of data augmentation methods. Step three requires learning expertise. In its simplest form, an established architecture is just retrained or fine-tuned. However, sometimes the task design requires adaptations and optimizations. Finally, the network is trained. Let's illustrate this deep learning methodology using a Kai example. I3POSNET is a method for surgical instrument pulse estimation. In short, we have an X-ray with a tool and we want to find the exact pose of the tool. That is its position and orientation symbolized by X, Y and alpha in the slide. How do we get this pose from the X-ray? This is step one, task design. I3POSNET assumes we already have an estimate and uses a modular design to embed in CNN. Crop a patch around the estimate, then predict some landmarks with the CNN, then reconstruct the pose from the landmarks. This can also be iterated. For sub-pixel accuracy, the CNN solves a regression task. It is important to note that the task is not just classification or segmentation, and therefore established methods might not be optimal. For step two, I3POSNET creates dataset and augmentation fitting this approach. As is typical for Kai, data is scarce and synthetic data needs to be integrated. The design also gives rise to an augmentation scheme which applies random rotation and translation to the patch. In step three, we find a neural architecture. Fill the green block. I3POSNET uses a VGGLI architecture other deep learning methods in Kai follow similar strategies and often choose a neural architecture established in the field of computer vision, modify it slightly, or directly transfer it to their problem. For example, Endonet pioneered endoscopic video analysis by introducing an extension of the LXNet architecture in a frame-by-frame end-to-end application. TripNet builds on top of the ResNet backbone and extends it by a custom module to achieve predictions in a more complex triplet target space. This end-to-end -end scheme, scheme is highly customized for Kai and comes with its own dataset. We believe it is a missed opportunity that most learning approaches for Kai do not customize more. We will show for instrument post estimation what can be gained. But customization is hard. Let's come back to our application to discuss how one finds a neural architecture. For i3POSNET, we did a grid search of parameters. This is within VGG-like models, so the actual variation of the architecture is actually pretty limited. However, in practice, this table already represents an approximated 50 GPU days of training time. Intuitively, we could translate this table into a performance prediction task with a computational graph of a neural network which represents the neural network architecture, we could build the corresponding model, train it on a dataset, and test its performance. In practice, this requires task design and data. This benchmark of the architecture should be efficient. What this really means is not too expensive in terms of training time and somewhat indicative of the actual performance. We could then train an independent network, a value estimator, to predict the performance of, say, 100 random networks. Neat. 
This way, this network learns an understanding of what architecture performs well. If it generalizes, we can get an understanding of patterns and performance. What is particularly nice is this performance estimate, the benchmark value, does not need to be uh, the validation loss. So it could also include robustness or other value concepts. However, two questions remain. How do we parse and represent architectures? They need to be both human and computer readable, so we can create and understand more network architectures. They should also be succinct, down to the essential, not have too much overhead, but at the same time allow for enough variation. Second, how do we find better network architectures efficiently? Just trial and error seems a bit simplistic. Also, we might want to use those architectures to train the value estimator. To limit the complexity, our network will be built by repeating a neural block. This is analogous to inception built from the inception module or ResNet from ResNet blocks and common in neural architecture search. Previous neural architecture search can be classified into two groups, discrete and continuous. The discrete strategy iteratively proposes, tests, and improves blocks. The architecture is described by NAS units. Each block will consist of multiple of these, where a NAS unit will have three network operations, yellow and green boxes, and also include two indices to say what to use for input. However, these units are not particularly efficient in terms of both optimization and functional redundancy, so not succinct. But if you are Google, you can accept the runtime of 2,000 or 200 GPU days on very small images. For Kai, this does not work. The continuous strategy stacks all options for neural network operations together and always uses a combination of all possible operations in the gray boxes. All possible architectures are trained at the same time and weights are shared. Only at the end, one specific set of operations is picked. With four GPU days, this approach is more computationally efficient, but very VRAM demanding because you need to keep all tensors in memory, limiting image size and network depth. I'm going to introduce our two method contributions now. First, we introduce symbolic neural architecture patterns, SNAPs. This is a stack-based language to describe neural architecture blocks as a sequence of operations. We have neural layers like convolutions and topological operations that implement skip connections and parallel paths. I'm going to show three examples. The blank sequence is the simplest. As you can see, the stack of tensors gets initialized with the outputs of the last two snap blocks, so the lower connection is a connection skipping the last block completely. We can easily implement ResNet-like blocks. Notice that if we have more than one tensor on the stack at the end, we simply add a merge operation. And just to show the versatility, complex more random blocks are also possible. The second method contribution is a search method. Starting from the intuitive prediction, we insert a latent space. Neural networks can work very efficiently with latent spaces, and their continuous space is nicer for search than symbolic sequences. A decoder completes the autoencoder part, so we can generate readable sequences from the latent space. We train this whole construct with three losses. First, a performance loss. Then, the typical autoencoder reconstruction loss. Finally, a consistency loss that makes sure the latent space maps back to the sensible sequences. We start with 100 randomly sampled architectures and find new architectures following this uh, performance gradient in the latent space. We can get corresponding sequences by plugging Z plus 1 into the decoder. This is our final neural block. It is similar to a ResNet block, but includes more convolutions and longer skip connections. If we evaluate the performance for poses, we find our learned architecture outperforms IFRI POSNET, reducing errors by 30 to 50%. You can find a large table with more absolute numbers in the paper. The DATS approach did not even reach IFRI POSNET performance levels. We believe this is due to the fact that with larger images, we had to significantly reduce the depth of the network limiting its capabilities. Autosnap finds this architecture after half a day. Note, the first 100 architectures are randomly sampled. The value metric is the negative log of the validation loss here, so linear increase translates to a multiplicative trans performance improvement. From there on, it quickly optimizes the architecture. After 48 GPU hours, nothing really changes. Here we compare with random sampling only sampling useful architectures because of the succinct representation. 
But this graph also shows a limitation of our method. Exploration at later stages, we sample randomly if we are in a local value metric minimum. So maybe a Bayesian approach might be an interesting path forward to sample uncertain architectures. While on the topic of limitations, SNAP also has one. It favors deep architectures. The language just requires a lot more symbols to represent shallow architectures. I want to close with a summary. We brought the optimization of neural architectures to Kai. For this, we developed a new method to address the requirements of customized architecture search, a reasonable search time with reasonable hardware requirements. The key here was to introduce SNAP, an uh, architecture language of sorts, and combining it with an efficient search method. This led to a 30 to 50% error reduction compared to the state of the art after less than half a GPU day of search.